Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. Um, I'm going to be drinking coffee and just kind of, I wanted to talk to you about some things that the Lord's just kind of been just highlighting, downloading into me. But anyhow, it's been some road trips, cities, states, even countries that He's been giving me. So I've got a book and I've been writing down, but I mean, they're like everywhere from Montana to Connecticut, Vermont to Nome, Alaska to people, specifics, some directions, some not. Um, been to some that have been easy, Italy, Texas. Been to half a dozen of them already. He just he told me can, years ago. He told me he could tell me and my wife to get in a car and just go or on a, on a plane. I know that you know I'm not trying to sound cool or or sexy or any you know. It's just things that God's highlighting because you know what this, this trip we went on. I'm in Dallas. It was 1,800 miles away in Pennsylvania, this little podunk town in Pennsylvania. Gave me some specific people to run into out there, and everything happened. But, you know, it was days of driving, guys. It was, you know, there was an effort put into it. And it wasn't all easy, what, you know? Why can't you just tell me to do this down the street, God? You know, why do I have to go all the clear across country? You know, my family needs some help. There were some things that transpired when we got back. People that I love got involved in some garbage. It's like, man, God, tell me to go all clear across country. For somebody. And I need help. Got some loved ones that are having some really, really serious health issues, you know. Man, God, you know. You just see about them. Instead of going off venturing off into some other country other part of the country but you know God you know it's it, he's given me the, he's given me the peace about it that it's okay and I've got him in prayer and that's what I can do right now a lot of prayer and he's got it and he's given me that peace that he's got it that I don't have to take care of it or, or do anything about some of them you know it's like okay you get it as long as I'm doing what he's telling me to do so you know it's kind of like okay God I don't you know fall back on the scripture trust not in your own understanding lean not on your own Tr trust not trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding let me get this right so I've got sitting right here on my coffee cup but anyhow so he's been giving me dreams visions um, it was visions for a long time now it's dreams but he'll give me scriptures after scripture just look at some of my other videos mostly they're a lot about scriptures because that's kind of what I'm about um, but on these trips he'll give me specifics um, one specific he gave me one time in a little town in Texas told me to go there pray for a postal clerk and then go to the library and ask from a for the live, for the for the clerk for a book on witchcraft, I'm like, wow, that's crazy, God. That doesn't make any sense. Go to the post office and pray for them. It's a busy place. People get bashed. Christians, you know, I don't see anybody lose their job because I'm praying for them in a public place like that. I don't have a problem doing it, being his mouthpiece. I, you know, I'm just I'm going to stand for God, for Jesus, for all the ghosts, whatever He tells me to do. But I don't want to jeopardize somebody else, you know, or hurt somebody else over it. You know, because they're kind of a captive audience because they're there and make them have to listen. I'm not going to do it. So I told God, but I did. Awesome. Happened just like he trans breakdowns, breakthroughs, ministered to the, pe the postal person for, took him out to dinner, ministered to him for an hour and a half, two hours, ministered to him for about five or ten minutes at the post office, but people started coming in and they were just bawling. I was like, man, this is not, you know, conducive to a breakthrough. But they were getting it, but they did get it. So then we went to the public library, and I asked him, and it was like, the little lady was like, told her, I said, man, I said, this is going to kind of sound weird coming from me, but I didn't even tell my wife. Because I was like, what if it's not God? I look stupid, egg on my face, I'm supposed to be a minister, man of God, listening to God, and crazy thought so I didn't tell her I told her we had to go to the library but, and I said ma'am I said this is going to sound crazy coming from us but do you have any books on witchcraft my wife just went into this 
if you're married, you know that look like, man, I stepped in a pile of doo doo and I am gonna hear about it. Maybe the next minute, maybe the next hour, but I am definitely in trouble. But then I looked over and she prayed in tongues. I'm like, great, awesome. But the lady said, no, that doesn't sound strange, but long story, you know, her whole family was a steeped granddad, grandparents, uh, aunts, uncles were all witches and warlocks, and she was worried about generational curses. And we ministered to her for about an hour. Breakthrough. Mostly my wife, really, because God told me the other specific about that trip was that she was going to be his mouthpiece, and so I just had to shut up and let her minister to this woman, which she did. But some specifics. We're supposed to go to this town in Pennsylvania and meet somebody and spe a specific business, and that's exactly what we did. And that's the reason why I'm not telling all the details is because I don't know if I want to, you know. Because I don't want it to be about me or anything, and I don't want it to be about them either, um, or hurting them. But because um, this is, you know, being posted on the net. So, um, but. My, usually when we go, we'll stay at a hotel, right? Best Westerns, because Lord told me to stay at as many Best Westerns as we can, but sometimes it's comforting, and just well, medium-sized hotels, not Hilton's or anything, and not real expensive, but most of them have decent lobbies. So, the Lord will wake me up early in the morning, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. A little town in Tennessee, because we were on a mission trip up there to meet a pastor. In Tennessee, long part of the story and the journey, but it was just an inner, inner, inner world and connection that we needed to meet them in person. We met them on the phone, but we needed to meet them in person, so so there we were, Knoxville, Tennessee. But our on our way to Knoxville, Tennessee, but we stayed in a little town in Tennessee, almost to Knoxville, but Knoxville was a little bit farther drive than we wanted to go. We were tired, so the next morning I wake up. What I do is I go down to the lobby. Most of them had decent lobbies, and I, you know, I love to have a cup of coffee in the morning, three cups, pretty much. That's kind of my routine, but it's also my prayer time. And I'm just going to pray in the lobby. Well, my prayer is this: because years ago, when I was 19, I tried to hammer the gospel into this guy, and it just turned out to be a big mess. Scripture, don't cast your pearl before swine. It was just a mess. So I, have to, I had to repent after that. And it was like, God, you send them. You open the doors. You tell me who to minister to. Because you know what, guys? Sorry to say, but not everybody's going to be saved to make it into heaven. It's not this big, open expanse of everything goes. Just read your Bible. But or look at some of my other messages. But that's a whole other message. But so I'm like, God send him. Who do you want me to minister to? You send him. So I'm sitting outside on this bench, this little hotel, not a little hotel, but a hotel in Jackson, Tennessee. Look down. Gonna go get another cup of coffee. I had two. There's my bottle. So I'm like, man, I better take it because it's you know out there in public and people come up there. That's where they smoke. And I'm like, I don't want somebody to take my Bible, so I'm like, I'll carry it with me. Well, I said, no, leave it there. It'll be fine. That where it's at. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wasn't one of those, makes sense, that makes sense. Obedient, not obedient. like, it's kind of, okay, God. Okay. So I did. Come back out. Guy standing right next to my Bible. He was drawn to it. Ministered to him, and he ministered to me for an hour and a half. I got something out of it, a lot, and so did he. Then, sit down in the lobby, wanted to minister in Knoxville, and wanted to minister to this one, one lady that was working there, and it just never transpired. But, one guy just started talking to him about sign on the side of his car and it just led him to be ministering to him, his wife, his father, his father-in-law and his mother-in-law for another hour doing exactly what God told me to do. The lady that I wanted to minister to, I was like, man, it's six in the morning. There was just a reason why I wanted to really minister to her. Like, 
left and we went to this church and awesome and met the pastor and did what we were supposed to do with this pastor and the connection was already there and it just you know was uplifting to everybody involved us and them just a great day eight o'clock that night it started at six in the morning when I wanted to minister to this lady but it just never the connection never transpired saw her and said something to her but it just never opened so I thought I missed God come back to the hotel at eight o'clock at night and there she is with another lady and nobody's around my wife ministered to her for a long time about an hour so I didn't miss God it just wasn't me so those are the kind of things that the Lord's doing and sending me on that's why I'm calling it road trips for Jesus it's like man God okay guys I just you know He's having to open doors because his last trip was like, there's no way. My wife couldn't take off any more work. She had no location. And just, but things just transpired. The doors just opened and there it was. First two week block of time. Go. Okay. So there's, you know, there's my sign. There's my answer. So we went. But it's been like that all these trips. And it's like, why oh God, you know, and, we came back from on the 4th of July all over Illinois. Seven days. Told me to go to some nursing home in Mount Vernon. I got one three blocks from me that has five, six thousand beds. It's a big hospital. And they're saying, why can't it be that? I could go walk up there, minister, and walk home and have dinner and pet my dogs, you know? Why do I have to drive 800 miles? But it was awesome changed one person's life for sure but I know he inspired and changed and transformed others too at that same trip all throughout it on the way there to get to Illinois he told me certain cities to go to one of them was Stillwater Oklahoma I'm like well it, you know it's like because I was kind of planning the trip I'm looking at Google and searching the map and it's like you know, it was 50, 75, maybe 100 miles out of the way. It was out of the way a little bit. It was in the general direction, but it was out of the way. I go, okay, God. So I look it up. There is a still water, of course. You know, I mean, there's probably still water. There's still water in Minnesota, but there's still water probably all over the place. But there was a still water Oklahoma. Please tell me to go there. So I get there, and it's the same thing, 6 in the morning. I'm up, sitting on this bench outside. Some guy comes out smoking. He goes back to me. He's 100, 150 feet away. He couldn't see me. He wasn't even you know, smoking a cigarette. Turn around. Walk towards me. I minister to him. His members of his family. Another Pentecostal guy walked by. That was the porter. Ministered to him. And another hour, hour and a half went by. So it's like, okay, God, I, you know. It's going to be available. So really, that's kind of what these, that's my whole gist to this. The road trips are just like, I'm going to be available, God, and you haven't opened the door, and because there's a financial cost to it, there's a time cost to it. Driving is not fun. When we went to Oklahoma, it was seven days on the road, pretty much. The last day was an 11, 12-hour day. We were in Illinois, and I wasn't planning on driving all the way home, but the Lord told me to go to Little Rock, Arkansas, and it's a whole other long story and we ran into somebody and it was just and we ended up driving all the way home and it was like didn't want to but there we were you know so but we never would have ran into this person if we wouldn't have went by way of Little Rock and it was just like God orchestrated our vain things so it's kind of like this is some stuff he's telling me but what's he telling you guys you know maybe it's a journey to the Go up to 7-Eleven and get a cup of coffee or something, but you might be having to minister to that clerk. I don't know. Maybe it's the guy sitting next to you at the church, at the church or the gal, or your pastor. But if you're in a big church, you probably can't, you know, it's just the time element. I mean, if they got a thousand people in the church, they can't talk to everybody. It's just physically impossible. They're doing that. They spent five minutes with everybody, plus, where are they in, where's their God time? Talking to Jesus. Where's their time with their family? Where's their time, you know? I mean, it's like, this could go on and on. They just, they can't do it. Sometimes we cop an attitude. It's like, man, the pastor talked to this person for five minutes, but ten minutes, but not me. 
I don't know why, but you know, we kind of kind of get off of that. But attitude. But what's God telling me to do? Us, it's get our car and go. And it's like, man, you know. Like I said, I mean, I got issues and family members and things that I need to do at home too. And it's like, but yet you're sending me some town I never even heard of that's highlighted in a dream or in prayer and I have to Google it and see if it even exists. You know? Idlewood, Illinois was one of them and I had to Google it and it does exist but it's just a zip code for the farmer. It's not even a town. Because up there, you know, there's a lot of cornfields and stuff so it, it, there's not a town. There's no place to visit. But, it's, but you Google it and it comes up. But he really wanted us to go to Mount Vernon to the nursing homes that, that were there. Because when I, that's what he told me to go to the nursing home. And then once I Google it, and Mount Vernon comes up. So that's where we ended up. You know, but it's like these different orchestrated things. But so, anyhow, that's kind of, you know, we've been downloading dreams. But dreams of him, dreams of scriptures. Look at some of my other videos. Just. And I'm like, man, okay, God, I'm just kind of at the point now where it's like I'm just in the obedience mode. It's like, okay, God, I'm just, I don't understand all of it. I'm just going to do it. So that's kind of what I'm giving you on direction on that, telling you on that. When your source is God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Bible, you're not going to go wrong. What's he telling you to do? be it may be just to minister to your kids you know you may have five kids or three kids or it may be to minister to your wife your husband your co-worker in the cubicle next to you or you may have an office and maybe the office next to you maybe you know you may be in a retail and they just you know I don't know so anyhow but mine's just been get in the car and go on road trips and it's like man you know but God's been providing opening doors like this last trip there was no way we could go and he told me three weeks before he said he wanted me to go right away and it's like man God ran right away and he said it's an emergency and it's just a long story but it's like In the natural, it was impossible. Couldn't get off work. Just wasn't going to happen. It just the, the, the block of time just was not there. But suddenly, within days, it was like here's a two week block of time to go. We didn't get, you know, I didn't get to take up an offering or anything or have somebody give us any money. We had to pay for it ourselves. But, you know, thank God we had a little bit of savings. But, you know, I was like, man, I needed the money to buy another car because my car's got 200,000 miles on it, 210,000 miles on it. It's ugly, needs a paint job, and, but it runs real good. So I'm like, I'm like okay, God, I'll, just, all right, I'll put that off a little bit longer. Still keep driving. You know, I don't know. I don't feel bad about it or anything. I don't feel like I made the wrong decision because... I, there was a dozen people, a couple in particular, we just rocked their world and God changed their lives. You could see tears from their heart because a lot of those people, most people don't hear their value. That's what I'm going to end it with, their value. My wife's got our house, if it's appraised, they're gonna look in the neighborhood. This house sold for that much. This much, you know, it's appraised and it's worth this much, and that's kind of how people are gonna pay for it. What other houses in the neighborhood are selling for? They call them comps or whatever. I'm not a real estate guy, but it's worth what it's worth. And that's the value. What people are willing to pay for it. God so valued the world, every soul that He gave. His son. Unadulterated, pure, clean, with him at the beginning and the foundation of the world. Son, his life for our messy, sometimes horrific, sinful, 
garbage infested twisted lives that's our value so anyhow um so that's kind of i mean i just i got a lot in me that but it took 38 years to get here so wasn't easy but so now it's kind of like time to just go out and pour out and just okay god I don't know why he sends me on a journey for half a dozen people or a dozen people or Claire Claus, you know, it's like, man, God, thousands of miles away and thousands of dollars to get there. I could think of better things to do and better ways and resources to maybe spend the money and or spend my time. But I gotta be obedient and go. So do you, so I don't know, you know, maybe, you know. First, I'm going to end with this. First one, I was sitting in prayer in my chair. It started two years ago. And he's like, I want to go to Italy, Texas. And I'm like, out of the blue, I don't even know anybody down there. It's three or 400 people. I've seen it because my mom and dad used to live in a little town north of Austin, Texas. And I would, you know, drove by there plenty of times and would see the sign Italy, Texas I just could they caught my eye because of what it said Italy you know so I knew where it was 60 miles south of Dallas but I'm okay so, but we went and it was awesome and God it was specifically in a time oriented and this long story but that was the start of it and it was like it's all these different places and, and every place we went things have transpired the way the Lord orchestrated them I get a little bit of direction some like the one about the book on witchcraft and some not but then we also run into other people there's all these interceptions of, of of people and lives and things and it was like okay god so it's like so if he's poured a lot into you if you've got a lot to give it may not be money it may be just time like i said it could be raising your kids pouring time into them studying the bible with them teaching them your wife treating them better husband treating them better time not just at church but in prayer in the Bible so we all have things and purposes to do we all have specifics and we're all unique so I'm just kind of sharing this road trip with you just kind of being raw about it and maybe not a lot of scripture a lot of ministry or whatever but just kind of just, well, there it is so I tried to get this one short too and it's like man God it just is not happening so, anyhow, we love you guys. Um, you can email me directly at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com. You can put comments on my YouTube channel, share this with others. Um, we appreciate y'all. Thanks. God bless you. Talk to you soon.